In this video, a multidisciplinary team from Atrium Health's Levine Cancer Institute, headquartered in Charlotte, North Carolina, discusses lung cancer multidisciplinary team communication and the impact of COVID-19. How do you optimize multidisciplinary team communication at Levine? Across the country, you'll see different networks or different groups that have multiple locations. And if you ask them, the real question becomes, how can you truly engage providers at each of those regional locations? And so there may be a central region, but our regional practices are very important. So I think the first thing we want to do is make sure that each of these centers is treated the same way. How can we facilitate communication? That's the big deal. And it happened uh, before COVID, and now it makes it even more difficult. Uh, we have expectations. We want folks to be able to reach out, communicate with our experts. If you're a general oncologist out in the regional setting, we don't want that person just going down the hallway and asking their partner who's there, who also may be a general oncologist. And we want them to be able to engage with our experts. In our institution, we emphasize uh, communication between specialists to ensure that patients are adequately uh, being treated in an efficient and uh, consistent manner. So in terms of radiation for lung cancer, a patient doesn't need to drive an hour to see me uh, for their lung cancer treatment because uh, I have a partner who is able to see those patients uh, closer to their home and deliver the same standard therapy. So that's achieved through several different uh, methods. Probably the most important method that we have in place is establishing guidelines and pathways where uh, all of our physicians are following those pathways to ensure that patients are getting the same care at uh, any location they go to. So what we've done is implemented pathways across our system, and those are reviewed every month. They are developed not only by the specialists, for instance, but also by general oncologists who participate in those sections. So we've not only been able to standardize what this best practice is, but we've also kept the communication lines open through our multidisciplinary tumor boards, through our communication practices, and it really has helped engage our uh, doctors out in these regional locations. How are your tumor boards conducted at Levine? Everybody talks about how great their tumor boards are. And I'll tell you, I've gone to a lot of tumor boards, and a lot of them are, are fantastic. But some of them don't work because you may have one or two people dominate, or one or two people with discipline sort of take over the entire conversation. And other ones might be afraid, or people may not feel comfortable sharing really complex decisions or what they did. We actually have, I think, curated very important relationships where people are not afraid of speaking up when they may not be comfortable or when speaking against the loudest voice in the room. And I think that's very important. It's the stuff that we don't talk about. So the people who moderate our tumor boards are really skilled at that and really feeling like welcoming to people who not just at the main facility downtown where I work, but at every other center. How has COVID-19 impacted your tumor boards? I think that our um, tumor boards have been able to function actually a little bit easier because more people um, don't feel the pressure of having to go in person and they can call in and be participate virtually. Our MDT has been present and virtual for a long period of time. Uh, and what that allows is for providers that are across our large system, which stretches across three states, to be able to present patients uh, in a format that allows for uh, disciplines that may not be uh, as readily accessible where they are, in particular radiation oncology or uh, 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 thoracic surgery. How has COVID-19 influenced your multidisciplinary team functioning and communication? We already had a digital platform established so that we were able to continue all meetings, whether that's a multidisciplinary tumor board or other section specific meetings without having to pivot. At Atrium Health, we already had an established telemedicine program that was already providing ICU and pulmonary critical care across the region. This allowed for us to make immediate changes without having to change the way that we take care of patients. At Levine, our challenge was how to keep performing routine oncology testing in addition to the COVID-19 testing performed in my laboratory. 
We have a robust digital pathology capability that aids us in our tumor boards and enhances our ability to collaborate with our colleagues. This certainly has been very important due to the social distancing that we are required to have from patients and other providers during the COVID-19 pandemic. How have you modified your processes for managing lung cancer? During COVID-19, we really used our clinical pathways to be able to communicate any changes to our regimens. For example, how to shorten infusions to decrease exposure to other patients. We then updated our pathways and communicated any changes across our system. For our patient visits, we now utilize virtual visits and meetings, um, which have allowed us to stay connected with our patients and with our team at Levine Cancer Institute. Is telemedicine here to stay? In my experience, telemedicine um, has some tremendous promise, um, really in many areas uh, of uh, healthcare uh, going into the future. And it's actually something that, that we at Levine have been quite interested in for some time. And when I came here and looked at the, at the size of the geographic footprint of Levine Cancer Institute and Atrium Health in general, uh, it's pretty amazing. And, and we have um, facilities several hundred miles away. Um, and so it's a very attractive concept, especially when you're talking about highly specialized care uh, in, in oncology and, and surgical oncology to be able to provide at least a lot of the upfront um, uh, evaluation uh, in a virtual fashion. You can imagine if somebody had to drive three or four hours for a visit with a surgeon to see if they can have surgery only be to told that they're not resectable. In my experience, we certainly have to have a role for inpatient uh, visits, looking at uh, folks, examining them, but there are also a number of visits that could be done using uh, telemedicine, and, and I'm, I think it's here to stay, and, and I hope it is here to stay. It's just one of the additional tools that we need to deliver good medicine across a, a large population. Look for other episodes from TOPS that highlight practical perspectives in managing lung cancer.